Having smart lights in the house brings a lot of convenience in your daily life, increasing productivity. And especially paired together with sensors and voice command, it can be extremely helpful in situations like when your hands are wet or full from carrying things. If you are planning to start your smart home journey, smart lights should be the first one in your list to look at. In my previous video, I gave a high level explanation of what are the various components that make up a smart home. It is something that I think is quite achievable by doing it yourself. There's really no need to spend that extra money to engage a company to do a smart home setup for you. So in this video, I'm going to give a 5 step guide on the end to end process of how do you make your lights smart. I have broken down the video into sections, so if you'd like to jump to any part of the video to look at each individual steps, uh, you can go ahead and do so in the video description. Anyways, there's something that I'm really very curious about. For those that is watching and yet to have smart lights, please share with me the reason why. Is it because of the price, the cost of it? Or is it because that you have no idea how to do it? Or is it something else? Then for those that already have smart lights, uh, share with me what is the brand and solution that you are using. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe. Step 1 is to plan and decide whether you want to go with smart light bulb or smart light switch for every single light point. This means that you only need either one of them, there is no need to have both on a single light point. In terms of pricing, both of them are priced at around 20 plus dollars. The only additional cost that you might need to factor in is whether it needs to connect to a hub. So if it's able to connect directly through Wi-Fi, then you don't need a hub. If it's using the Z-Wave or Zigbee protocol, then you will need a hub for it to work. Looking at ease of installation, I would say most of the cases, the smart light bulbs will be much easier. But of course, there will be some exception. Like for example, my dining light where I'm hanging three lights from down from the ceiling. The effort to replace the light bulbs for the three of them is really much more than having to just replace one single switch. But if you're looking at replacing a smart light switch, of course you need to rewire the old existing switch and put them back to the new one. Um, of course, doing that will uh, definitely include a certain amount of risk. If you didn't do it correctly, you might run into a short circuit. But of course, you can definitely hire an electrician to help you to do it. Um, but again, all this is more like just a one-time effort installation only. So it's not like something you have to do it like very often yourself. Another point to consider is the aesthetic look. So if you're going with light switch, you need to plan what color of the light bulbs you want. So the typical choices will be normal, white or warm light or cool white. So you need to plan that ahead. And of course the look of the switch itself, whether it matches with the overall design of your place. And of course, if you're replacing one switch and you're not replacing the other switch that may, might be just beside, it will look uh, pretty weird and not very consistent. So most of the cases, if you're replacing switch, you, have, you kind of have to replace all of them to have that consistent look. Whereas for smart light bulbs, a very good plus point of this is you don't need to decide what color of the light you want. You can have all sorts of colors with this and you can also adjust the brightness. So that is one plus point of smart light bulbs. The last point I have is on the usability. So if you are using smart light bulbs with traditional light switches, you will need to have the light switches on at all times in order for the smart light bulbs to work. So there will be cases where maybe sometimes your family members or anybody who visit your place that uh, accidentally switch off your light switch or they basically don't know that you are using a smart light bulb for that particular light point. And when it switch off, then your smart light bulbs totally cannot work anymore. So that's the case as compared to using light switches. Um, it still pretty much behaves like a traditional light switch. There isn't too much of a difference in terms of usability. So my personal recommendation is to go with the smart light switches as much as possible. Um, especially for a new house where you can actually get an electrician to do up the entire uh, all the light switches for you for the whole house. Um, is generally more reliable and it has a longer lifespan. But for old housing where, like for my parents' place, um, it's a very old HDB, they are still using those very uh, box-up uh, light switches. So it seems like it's really a lot of effort to replace the switches for those kind of very old light points. So for those cases, probably using a light bulb, smart light bulbs would be much easier for them. 
Step two is making the purchase. I would say it's the most important step because once you commit to a certain ecosystem, it's quite expensive to switch to another one. So you sort of have to make the decision of which brands of solution to go with at this point. So for light bulbs, smart light bulbs, the most popular one will be the Philips Hue. Uh, but it's really very expensive. So the standard E27 light bulb costs $89, but because it's requiring the Zigbee protocol, you will need to purchase a hub for it to work with. So you need to factor in both of these costs together for the initial setup. Uh, the cheap alternative which I'm using is the E light bulb. So Elite is using Wi-Fi, so you don't need a hub to work with, and the price is significantly much cheaper. So that's what I've been using. For smart light switches, there are really quite a number of companies doing this. So there are various design, various uh, looks, aesthetic looks for the smart light switches. So you can choose one that matches with your house design. I think that's most important. There are some with touchscreen, so the one I'm using is the Akara one. Yeah. So if you don't need the item urgently, I will usually not shop from Lazada or Shopee because it's uh, more expensive. So you guys know my favorite platform is definitely going with Taobao. So this is my purchase that I made on 11.11. So take for example this Akara Magic Cube. Right now it's 69 China, uh, China currency show you what is the price in Lazada so uh, China Lazada is selling at uh, okay. let me look at the official one the official store is selling at $27 so if I convert $27 to Chinese China currency it's 132 but I'm paying only about 69 in Taobao so it's quite an obvious choice because I don't need the item urgently also so I don't mind to wait for it so one little trick that I want to show you guys in case you guys don't know uh, especially for those that can't really uh, read Chinese Mandarin so you can use the image search to help you look for the item so for example, at Lazada, you want the Magic Cube. So I can go to this Magic Cube. I want to save the picture of this cube. So I use the sniping tool. I save the picture. Then I go to my Taobao. So this is the Taobao main website, main homepage. So I can click this icon to use an image search for you. So you, once you insert the image, you can see all the related images will appear. So this is one good method to, for you to do the search for the items that you want. So just look for the image and just put in the image over here to search. So the toughest part of this entire process is step 3, which is the installation. I'll be showing you guys how to install light switches using this one right now, the smart light switches as well as the smart light bulbs which is relatively much easier Okay, so once you purchase the item, the item is delivered, you unbox right, you open up the light switches so you can see that there is an L1 and L over here, there will be two wirings that needs to go in here so you just loosen the top screws this these two top screws so that there will be allowance for the wire to go through later okay so all you just need is actually just a test pen so to remove the switch you just need to remove this part first right so there will be two screws over here so you just unscrew these two and you can access to the wiring inside so according to my electrician, he told me that the light switches are the light switches from HDB are all without neutral. So that's why I bought the light switches all without neutral and it all works. So 
my demonstration here is based on the one gang so of course if there is two gangs or three gangs it will be more cable so you can see that there are only two cables here which will match exactly to what I will need to put here okay so similarly there will be two screws that um, holds on to the two wiring so you just need to unscrew uh, unscrew the two wirings on top uh, the two screws on top so actually if for new PTO you can always get your electrician to do everything one shot for you okay so once removed I will put in the two wiring into these two holes. So once secured, okay, I fix back this in. So again, align that two screws, that two long screws back in. Once it's secured, then you can put back the front casing. Alright. I have a standing light here from IKEA, which I'm going to demonstrate using a smart light bulb, replacing with the smart light bulb e light one. So it will be so much more straightforward as compared to the light switches. So light bulbs typically are very easy. Just need to unscrew this part. Remove the IKEA light bulb. Put in the E light bulb. Done! Okay, let me switch it on. Step 4 is to add the device to your app. So in my example, I can only show the Akara and E-Lite app. So I choose Akara Home instead of Mi Home is because you can set Akara the region to be others instead of going to China mainland. In Mi Home, you have to set it to China Mainland and it will be laggy at times. So that's why I switch everything to Akara and using others for the region. And also because Akara can integrate with uh, Google Home, which I will show later in my next step. So to add a device, just simply tap on the plus sign, choose the light switches that you have installed. So in my case, the Smart Wall Switch D1 with no neutral single. Choose the hub, then you need to long press on the switch itself. Once added, you can rename this. So previously I have already renamed this so they remember the settings for this. Choose the location that you want the light to be. So let me rename this to Kitchen Cove 1. 
Alright, so once done, you can control the light on and off inside the kitchen. So this is my new installed one, Kitchen Cove one. Alright, so if you have any scenes that have already been configured, you can also add them in. So I have a lights on uh, scene over here. I can add this additional switches that I've added in. And if you want to set any automation rules for this particular switch, you can also do so in the automation uh, section. So that's all for the Akara app configuration of adding a new light switches. Now I'll proceed to add the light box from my e-light app. So I go to e-light. So I choose add device. Choose the correct box that you have installed. So in my case, it's the color light box 1S. Okay, you need to follow a set of instructions in order to uh, make sure that your bulb can be recognized by the app. So you need to follow this set of steps. Okay, once it's recognized, just select the bulb, tap next, choose my router, next. So now it's trying to make a connection with the light bulb. Connected successfully, tap done. You can rename this to whatever you like. So I rename this to be standing lamp. Okay, so now it's connected. You can set the color to whichever color you like, like I mentioned, and all sorts of colors, and you can adjust the brightness level over here also. Then of course, you can set some flows to it. So you can play around. It's quite fun to play around with all these lights. So this is the e-light configuration. So once done, you can see that over here at your device, you have one of this. So the last step is to add those apps that you're using to Google Home. Let me go to my Google Home and to do that, you just tap on the plus sign, choose a setup device, then choose works with Google. Then over here, you will see the list of apps that has integration with Google Home. Choose those that you are using. So for example, um, one of the very common ones will be Smart Life. So just choose Smart Life, then you will be prompt to fill in the login credential. So once you have done that, just tap on link now and you will see all the devices in your main page. Uh, one quick little tip here. So if you are going to buy a soundbar or any speakers, might as well get one that has a built-in voice assistant. So in my case, my boss, my boss soundbar has a built-in Google Assistant, so that's nice. So back at the home page, you'll be able to see all the devices that has been added from the apps that you have chosen. So one thing that I like to do is I like to uh, make sure that all the naming is consistent throughout my apps, including the uh, Akara app, the Eli app, as well as the Google Home app. Even my physical labels on the switches itself, I also make sure that they all have the same consistent naming. Google Assistant will recognize the names that you use in Google Home. So you just need to make sure that these are the names that you plan to use for your voice commands. So over here, definitely you can choose to turn on and off the switches. Then another thing that you would like to do is go to your routines. Inside your routine, you'll be able to set like, for example, this is a very common one. Whenever you say bedtime or good night, Google will perform the following steps for you. So you want to be able to turn off all these lights that you have put in. Then another thing is uh, adjusting the scenes. So for Akara app, they are even able to port in the scenes that you have configured over there and be seen inside the Google Home also. So if you like to do that, you can do so. So there are a lot of different options that you can choose. You can play around with them. 
So basically that's it for the voice assistant command. Let's test this out. My soundbar is my Google Assistant also. Okay Google, switch off standing lamp. Got it. Turning the standing lamp off. Okay Google, switch off kitchen cove. Got it. Turning off two switches. I hope this video is helpful in helping you to understand everything you need to know about smart lights. This 5-step guide should generally apply to all regardless of which brands of solution you choose. Feel free to ask me in the comment section below if you have any questions. I have so many videos planned in my pipeline like doing a home office desk tour, how to plan and run your network and wiring, walkthrough of a Taobao purchase and so many more. So do remember to subscribe, it motivates me to do more content like this. Really appreciate the support. Bye and I see you in my next video. Google, good night. Good night, Alex.